Okay, guys. Hi, how are you? I was watching Art Joy of Sharing's live broadcast the other day about creativation hacks. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link their video in the description below, their recording of their broadcast. And as they were talking, I was thinking of a couple different things. One of them was um, the heat transfer foil. So I happen to have this brand. It's from Creative Vision Stamp. Um, dot com. I'll link their website in the description below. We um, were introduced to it at the retreat I went on in October to South Carolina. And um, normally um, you, um, it'll, it'll transfer via a laminating machine onto a laser printed image and they sell images. But I was wondering what's, what can I stamp some of my stamps and designs with that'll transfer the foil. I don't have a laser printer. That's an expensive piece of machinery I don't want to invest in right now. So I was trying different things. So I had a big embossy, embossing stamp pad. That didn't work. And I don't know if it was just because it was old or I don't know. That did nothing. I tried an embossing pen and rubbing that over, you know, the rubber stamp, it, that did nothing. So I was about to just give up and put everything away and I thought, why don't I try a glue stick? What's the worst that could happen? As long as I wash it off the stamp right away, it should be fine. So I tried um, both an Elmer's and a Yoohoo stick. This is the Elmer's. This is Yoohoo. Um, while these are sort of a little bit detailed stamps and so you don't get a perfect image, but I do like the image I got. Plus, when you do this kind of embossing, you also have these waste pieces that are interesting to do things with. So then I'm thinking, okay, if it does that, which I'm okay with, with the more detailed stamps, these are the Atomic Age stamps, and they always come with um, their layering stamps, like a lot of other stamps are. And so you always get the solid and then the detail. And you stamp the solid first and then the, de then the detail. So now I'm wondering, what, we, what will we get with the solid? So this is what you do. So I'm going to take a piece of cardstock, and I'm using my Tim Holtz um, stamping thing. I forget what it's called. <laughs> I'm going to take one of my stamps, and I'm going to lay it flat down. Actually, I'm going to just take both of them. I'm going to see what they both do. And then I'm going to close the lid, and they'll stick to the lid. One of them kind of had some ink on it, but that's okay. Then I'm going to ink up the one that sort of looked like moons with the Elmer's. And you, the only thing about this is you want to be kind of quick. And I'm, I'll link up the uh, ink up, link up, ink up the squares with the YooHoo. I do find the YooHoo is a little bit more stringy, if that makes sense, than the Elmer's. So you're going to get like glue boogers and you're going to press hard. You're going to want to put something in here to hold the paper down when you lift because the paper will want to stick to the stamps. And then we're going to take a piece of foil. This one is called Pride, I believe. Yep. And it's my favorite one. And then put it into a piece of printer paper and then run it through your heat laminating machine. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Going through the heat laminating machine, I'm going to take some baby wipes and clean off my stamp, clean the glue off my stamps. Now I am not usually very diligent about cleaning my stamps or stencils uh, unless I'm using them with mediums or glue or something. So I would recommend if you're doing something like this that you clean them off afterwards. Okay. Just peel. Look at that. Look at that. That is so cool. 
So you don't need anything fancy. If you run across some of this heat transfer foil um, and you have a coupon or it's on sale, uh, pick it up. And as long as you have a glue stick and a heat laminating machine, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, you may be able to do this with an iron too, just FYI, but I haven't tried that yet. If one of you have, let me know. Put something in the comments below. That's it. So, I've got some scrap piece of white paper here, some isopropyl alcohol, some powdered pigment, some gum arabic, and a little bottle. So one of the things that came out this year, sorry, I'm gonna move my chair so I can sit down, okay. One of the things that came out this year was uh, pearlized alcohol inks. So I was kind of wondering as they were talking about them and pearlizing inks they already own, could you just like make your own alcohol ink? Like, and you pr I know you probably could, but like from these things that I already had in my stash. I didn't buy any of this. I have the gum Arabic because it's a really great binder for some of my watercolors. I had powdered pigments because they're great not only to make watercolors with, you can mix it with acrylic mediums, you can also mix it with resin. And I always have isopropyl alcohol around, so I don't know, let's try it and see what happens. <laughs> I'm gonna actually get a pipette. These were gifted to me from my friend Lindy Lessard. Thank you, Lindy. Um, okay, so I'm gonna use the pipette because I think it's the easiest way to get the alcohol out of a bottle without making a big mess. I don't wanna, I don't know, I don't wanna make too much of this. Okay, so we've got a little bit of, oops, where are we? Where's the camera? There we are. A little bit of rubbing alcohol, that much. The bottle's not very big, it's little. Okay, this is a Color Art Powdered Pig Primary Elements um, Pigment. And this one, do we know what color this one is? Let's see, glasses. Guatemalan green. That's what it says. Um, I'm gonna need a different way to get it out of there. I was afraid I was gonna to have to cut there and that because I was gonna make a mess and that was just gonna go everywhere. I'm gonna grab a tool, like maybe my X-Acto knife. Just because I don't want to get up again to go get a toothpick or something. I'm just gonna put a little teeny bit in here. Now this is a pure pigment, it doesn't have any binder in it, which is hence the gum Arabic. So this is a binder, so let's Ugh. Has a, you know, one of those adult-proof caps on it. Holy cow! All right, hold on. I had to have the husband in. come help, go help me. All right, so now we're gonna just grab a little bit. No idea how much I need. I'm just guess guessing here. I'm gonna put the little stopper thing on and this and put that on so that we can shake it without it going everywhere and mix it up it looks pretty Oops, where are we? Looks pretty. I don't know what it's gonna do. And again, we're just completely guesstimating here. Okay.
kind of watery, but that could be the pigment because I didn't put enough in there. It's not dry all the way yet, but the edges are dry. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see on camera that the pearlized part of this, but it is definitely a pearlized pigment. And it is not wiping off. The little bits of pigment that I didn't mix very well are coming off, but the rest of it is definitely sunk right into the paper. So that's pretty interesting. I like that. So, you know, if you don't have alcohol inks or you don't have pearlized alcohol inks, don't go out and buy them. Use what you have. Yeah, that's pretty. I'm having trouble telling because all my fingers are dirty at this point because I've been playing with supplies. But, yeah, no, it's not coming off. That's pretty cool. Thing I was telling a friend about our, uh, our alcohol ink experiment. She said if you have alcohol ink, how does the pigment mix with it? The answer is it mixes very well. So I took some of my rubbing alcohol, which is in this spray bottle, I use it for other things, and I put it in here, and then I put some of the powdered pigment in it and mixed those two together, and then added um, out regular uh, Ranger alcohol ink, and I got this beautiful color. Now the powdered pigment is called Lemon Drop, and that's where all the shimmer is coming from. The alcohol ink is Latte, and it doesn't have its Adirondack ink. It has no shimmer in it at all. So, beautiful. Um, I like powdered pigments because you can do this sort of thing with them. You can mix them with um, acrylic mediums and make an acrylic paint. You can mix them with gum arabic and make sort of a watercolor that's re-wettable. Um, so that's really cool. And um, so I usually have powdered pigments around. So if I'm gonna invest in anything, it's usually these, um, to be honest. But that's me, so you need to decide what's good for you. All right, that's it for today. So play with your supplies, see what you can do, and share in the uh, comments below if you have any tips for pearlizing your own inks or making your own inks or paint. And um, let's get a conversation going. You can also do that over in my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression. And um, you can find the links to support the free content on my channel, the links for the Facebook group, Patreon, my tip jar, Amazon wish list, all that stuff, happy mail address, all that stuff um, in the description below and or on my the link tree link that's in the description below. If you click on that, you're going to find me every place you can find me on the internet. Um, so that's it for today. Go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later. Bye guys.